Before taking a look at the influence of the follow time parameter, remember that the reader is set to loop mode for the audio after parameter. Let's unfold the parameters of the audio layer to access the waveform and select the reader to set the audio after mode to silence, which will cancel the extension of our loop. Let's play the animation. Once the audio signal ends, the analyzer continues to analyze the audio mix, but since it's based on silence, it reports back zero to the scale parameter. The follow time parameter is based on the current time of the composition to analyze the sound without taking into account any possible time offset applied to the layer. We can see that no change is made to the animation. Enabling the follow time option lets you shift a layer and its animation keyframes while continuing to analyze the sound at the current time. If we disable the follow time option and shift this layer from left to right, we'll cause a time offset between the sound analysis and the application of the audio analyzer to the scale. Let's see what happens if we shift this layer 30 frames to the left, which is by one second since we're at 30 frames per second. The circle scale goes back to zero even before the music ends. Now if we shift this layer to the right and extend its visibility to the beginning of the animation, the silence causes an initial scale of zero, and when we hit play, the oscillations applied to the scale are now offset by just over a second. Unchecking the follow time option allows you to induce time offsets in order to delay the audio analysis. This can be used to create visual echoes, by duplicating the same circle several times with different offsets. But for now, let's enable the follow time option again, shift our layer to cancel the time offset, and place its visibility keyframe at the beginning of the animation. In this video, we went over how to use the follow time parameter to induce a time offset when analyzed by the audio analyzer.